It is still seven o'clock. Um, welcome to the December 13th, 2022 school committee meeting. I am the chair, Elizabeth Spinney, and I call the meeting to order. Um, first order of business, I would like to welcome our newest member, student member, Anbita Gurivada. Uh, she's representing the class of 2024, our junior class at Grafton High School, and uh, welcome. Thank you. Very happy to have you here. All right. Um, next item, we have public comment. Do we have anyone here who would like to make a public comment today? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to general business. Um, welcome representatives from um, DECA in Grafton High School, and um, you're welcome to come up front, and you're first up on the agenda. Thank you for coming today to tell us what you've been doing. And if you don't mind um, introducing yourselves first. Of course. Uh, my name is Wilson Fedick, and I'm the VP of Finance for DECA. Uh, my name is Aiden Walker. I'm the VP for Community Outreach. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Dwyer. I'm the co-president of DECA. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. We are so excited. I remember doing this last year, <laughs> and <laughs> I couldn't wait to get back here. Uh, so basically, we're here because, really, we're just proud of what we've done so far in the community. And we're hoping to see what else we can possibly do in the future. Um, Aiden and I, uh, for our competitive event this year in DECA, we've been working a lot on uh, community awareness and reaching out to the community, specifically uh, in terms of the environment. So over the summer, both of us volunteered at the Community Harvest Project. And that uh, it's, I think it's four minutes down the road, two minutes from our houses. And it's just this place where you can go and volunteer a couple hours in the summer, often into the fall. And we did some research and found out that a lot of kids don't even know it exists. And a lot of kids who have gone haven't been since elementary school since for a field trip. And we wanted to get involved in that because over the summer, we just had so much fun going there all the time. So uh, working with Mr. McLaughlin, who's one of the head super uh, advisors there, uh, we were able to kind of help them not only with the farming, but help them uh, kind of create their, uh, what's it called, 5K. And they were able to raise tens of thousands of dollars and we were able to help them volunteer, which was really amazing. We had got DECA involved, the National Honor Society. We're really proud of that. Mm -hmm. And I feel that we were very critical in that success, which is gonna help thousands of people. Additionally, we were working with the farmer's market this year, uh, just outside, um, with Mrs. Joffroy and trying to help DECA be more involved in that. So one thing we did is we had our own stand for a week, along with the tons of marketing throughout all of DECA. Uh, we were able to help draw in a lot of people and we made actually a good amount of money for the club. And we have a lot of plans in the future. We're actually developing right now a plan on how we can get two or three projects to help with marketing, how we can help with business solutions and how we can help draw people and especially a younger crowd because we are just minutes, uh, like a 30 second walk to the farmer's market and it happens right when we get out of school. And a bunch of students that we polled didn't even know it existed and a bunch didn't even uh, realize that they could go for not even the whole time, they just could go for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Honestly, there's a chance if you go fast enough you could still make the bus. <laughs> so it's been a huge opportunity and we're so happy to have been there for it. So in addition to the events we've done within the community, we've also tried to uh, do events within the school as well. So in November last month, we took a trip down to the middle school and uh, spoke to some students about uh, business opportunities up at the high school. We spoke to them about DECA and other business classes that are available and just tried to get them interested in trying to help us like work at all these events within the community when they get up here. Um, additionally, in, in the high school, we've talked to classes throughout the school, mainly business classes, and tried to get them to get more involved with the community. We've talked to them about the community harvest project and the farmer's market, and as well trying to get them to help join us in DECA and just continue developing and growing our community. Um, I'd just like to take a second to share all of the different conferences and trips that we've been to. So. In October, members of the board in, on DECA, we went to Bentley University and there we got to participate in different leadership workshops so that we could take that back to our club and just improve upon that and work with our peers and just to better the club itself. 
In November, we went to this event called Deca Day on the Hill, and this is where we visited the State House, and we got to tour and just meet with our state representatives, so that was a great opportunity. And then just recently, actually, uh, last week, members of DECA went to Nichols College for a mock competition. So this is where we got to prepare everyone who was doing a role play for the competition, which we called Districts, up in January. Um, and I think this was a great opportunity for them. They got to see how it worked. And we also got to tour another college. So that was a great opportunity as well. So part of these opportunities lead to uh, the Winter Gala, which is on January 21st, this upcoming year, from 6 to 9.30. So it's an event that the whole community gets involved in, businesses from Cancun's to Pepperoni Express to, to Anytime Fitness, anywhere a bunch of small businesses around Grafton come and donate prizes and raffles to this uh, wonderful night that we host at, up at Highfields. So we have um, a bunch of tickets still available uh, to for sale if you're at all interested in joining this event. Um, anything else about that? Well, Lisa. Um, it's going to be on January 21st. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free. Um, really, it's just one of our biggest fundraisers, and that's going to help the club a lot. Where would somebody look online if they were interested in purchasing tickets? Uh, our website, GHS Deca Store. We sell all of our Winter Gala tickets there in addition to some merchandise we have available there as well. Perfect. And are you having an auction this year? Are you looking for businesses to donate to that? And how would, would they how would they reach out if they wanted to donate something? Yeah, we've reached out to a lot of different uh, businesses so far. If any other businesses wanted to reach out to us, you could email any of us or Mr. Maxwell, uh, really, we're looking for any donations. Uh, we've had a lot of success so far, but we appreciate any business who's willing to help. Um, and also, uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for allowing us to be here. Uh, we don't normally get opportunities like this, so we really appreciate the time we have here. And if there's anything DECA can do to help out in the community, please let us know, and we really appreciate it. Well, I'm surprised to hear that you don't get this opportunity very often because you're also well spoken. Um, really appreciate you coming out here today and letting us know what you've been doing. Um, anyone on the school committee have any questions for anybody else? Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had an idea, but. <coughs> <coughs> great job, you guys, especially yes, getting involved with the Community much. Harvest you. Project. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. All right. Have a great night. Thank, Thank you so you. much for well coming. Done. All right. Next up, <coughs> one of my favorite topics of the year, and <coughs> hopefully favorite of many who are watching and listening tonight, the Grafton School Public Schools 2023-2024 calendar. Yes, yeah, so this is our um, early draft. Uh, the thinking is presented to school committee tonight. Uh, the committee can give it thought. Um, we've got a little more input, which I'll speak to in a second, that is, we're going to receive on Friday. Um, consider it, make any recommendations that you may have, and then uh, January 10th, when we meet next, I'll put forth uh, a more developed version and we can either ask the committee to approve that or make further redu uh, further reductions, jump into the budget, um, further changes, and we can do it on the 24th. So we're a little ahead of the game, and that's a good thing. In creating this 23-24 draft, this was the easiest one in the past 12 years in terms of just the way it lined up. It just was kind of cookie cutter, um, took this year's and put it into next year's. Um, Without any snow days, we would the last day would be June 11th, uh, first day of school on the 29th, the typical um, build up with three days, four days, and then uh, full five day weeks. We'd keep um, the conference day on that election day. That worked out in terms of just the, the nature of the day with the voting taking place in the schools. It, it just worked uh, this year, or at least I think it did. Um, and that input, Kristen Gasper is meeting with the uh, GTA representatives. They had brought up at their last meeting with Kristen that they had some input um, or suggestions, and, and that's great. So I'll collect those on Friday, share them with the committee, and obviously can, they can be taken into consideration before the next meeting. Okay. 
Yeah, I guess my my uh, I see what you mean when things just kind of lined up this it year. The first day um, for the half day for teachers to return is the 28th, or not half day, but the the te- day the teachers yeah. are coming back. The K through six open door day. Um, you know, first day of school, my birthday. You know, that's always that's what we were I, I always for. strive for that, <laughs> and you know, I'm very excited to see that. Um, it's it's I've never I don't remember ever seeing. Um, April recess so late it's just like that's one it, it doesn't really matter but it, it's it seems like Patriots Day is always on a teen day it, it, it's yeah, we, just we interesting how that, that fell but yeah um, and that's the nice thing about having this month is I mean I've counted the days it, I bet 40 times but everybody yeah. else will get to count them and see something I'm missing yeah. I'm sure we'll find things and that might be one. Oh, um, and I wasn't implying that anyway no, very just, well. you know, this is exactly what happened yeah yeah uh, and that's a good thing I'd much rather it happen in the next month <laughs> as opposed to you know next September any comments questions from the committee yeah Laura Patriots Day is the week before through the okay. 13th so Absolutely. we're gonna mix it up this so week. It is no, but this is why we don't share the printed version <laughs> yeah. until um, according to the internet perfect which is always well, not important. perfect, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure your site. Kind of glad to have it, but getting everybody to take a look at it um, is just a good thing. Okay. Anything? No. All right. All right. Well, we'll um, take this and and digest it and come back next week and talk or next yep. meeting and talk about it again. Thank you for getting this prepared so early. This is great. It's a pleasure. All right. Next, um, the fiscal year 24. Budget. So I'm going to give you an overview of where we stand in terms of the <coughs> FY24 budget. Uh, as usual, if you have questions, just cut me off. That's no problem whatsoever. In terms of the general timeline, to give you a sense of where we're at um, today, I'm going to talk about that v- the very the first cut, that preliminary look at the budget. Um, again, we have about a month to take feedback, work with the town side and refine what I put before you today and what I've shared with you in terms of documents. Um, and then if everything goes beautifully, we'd have that budget hearing on, the, on January 24th. Uh, in meeting with the town administrator, I guess it was last week, um, he's facing the very same challenge that we are, in, and I'll speak to it in a second, of that shift from soft right to VADAR and VADAR talking to ClearGov. It still isn't mapped out and working, um, which is a challenge. It's, it's just going to take some time. They said they'd have it done this week. We'll, we'll see if they do. Once they have it done, the beauty of ClearGov is it's set up to take all that information. Like Once the two systems connect, it all flows beautifully. But until they connect, we're kind of cobbling together a budget. Um, so I mentioned to Evan that I've got we have the hearing set for the 24th, but we may not be ready. And he, he's in the same exact boat. So it may very well be in February. We'll see. And then in March, uh, we would present to finance committee, meet with PTG, meet, meet with the different PTG groups if uh, needed or if that's d- decided um, as something we'd like to do this year. And then, of course, in May, uh, the budget would go before the school committee. Uh, I'm sorry, we'll be go before the uh, town meeting in the spring for consideration. So in terms of what I was just talking about, this is just a, a visual of that. So from FY22 and prior to that, we would do all of our accounting essentially in soft right. I would get those printouts and create a budget book every year. We got pretty good at it, I thought. In FY23, we moved to ClearGov, which I think is going to be better, but we have yet to have a fiscal year where it's set up in a way that it makes life easier. So far, it's been a challenge, and and some of that's to be expected. Um, But we used ClearGov. We actually did kind of a combination of what we did in FY22 and before. We made it work last year in 23. Now, this year, we've moved away from SoftWrite to VADAR, and VADAR, as I mentioned, isn't communicating effectively with ClearGov. So it's been a tremendous amount of work for Anita and I know downstairs. Um, and again, once once that's kind of all green on the bottom, we should be flying um, 
because we've I, got all the information. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but can I just ask now so the Course. point isn't lost, but why did we move from soft right to VADAR if we're going to clear gov and if they were talking to each other or you had that figured out, then why? Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was on the town side. We, we, oh, we just used just their decided. system and they definitely okay. liked VADAR better and it's probably made a ton of sense. Okay. I think okay. in hindsight, I, haven't, I don't think I've asked Evan this, so could be speaking a little bit out of school. I think if you asked, they would have said, if we could do it again, we'd probably purchase it and have a six months or a 12 month mm. time frame. It mm -hmm. said we just dove in to the deep end. Mm. Um, I see. And it's like next month it'll be done and everybody's working really hard, but yeah. uh, it's just not, it hasn't fully come together. All right, in terms of conditions and assumptions for FY24, what I plan to put before the committee is gonna be a level service budget. So not a level service in terms of the cost, of course all the costs go up in terms of materials, salaries, et cetera. But what we're providing is largely a level service um, in terms of what students and staff experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, there's one new position in this uh, budget, and I'll speak to it in a moment. It's an adjustment counselor position. Uh, we would have steps and lanes applied to all bargaining units. We're assuming that federal and state grants will be funded at their current levels. We would continue to have all of our revolving accounts, um, preschool, parking, transportation. Um, those would operate without any change. Um, the special education circuit breaker when we built this, we're still building it, anticipating about a 65% reimbursement. Last year, it jumped up kind of under the umbrella of COVID to 75%. Um, I was in a meeting today, a virtual meeting with some um, representatives from DESE, and they indicated that it may be 75% again, which would, would definitely help us. Uh, I mentioned continued transportation fees and chapter 70, you may recall in FY23, we received a really sizable increase, about 1.4 million, and we anticipate that's gonna continue. Um, that, that definitely, th there's no scenario where an additional 1.4 million doesn't help. Uh, and this year it is just incredibly uh, important and valued for sure. So in terms of the, the budget overview and that story of the FY24 budget, uh, this isn't just for Grafton. You're gonna see and hear about this over the coming three to four months that for the most part, COVID-related funds have now been exhausted. Some of the bigger districts that brought in millions and millions, they've stockpiled a little bit and they've got till the end of FY24 to spend out. Um, but mo uh, aside from those outlier districts everybody has at this point spent out um, but we are still carrying in the current year so in 22 23 we're still carrying some staff especially in in terms of medical nursing staff um, which has been great we were worried about covid it's not covid we're wrestling with but it seems like every other person's out sick recently it's, it's definitely not going to be a banner year for fighting the flu um, you're gonna hear about districts struggling mightily, much, much more so than we will with that, that shift from the COVID years with all the additional funding, now that's gone and now it's kind of back to reality and they're still doing a lot of work in terms of special education, um, therapeutic services, nursing, those costs are still there. Um, so it's gonna be a, a challenge. That's going to be, there's no doubt in my mind, the story of the spring. Not, not necessarily in Grafton, but when you look at the paper and look at the educational landscape, that's gonna be a big story. Um, and what I'm gonna talk, or what I am talking about tonight does not take into account any increases in state funding. Uh, there is a lot of talk, and talk is cheap, but there's a lot of talk right now on the state level of additional funding being provided to schools to address the very issue I just talked about. Um, there's not right now a lot of opti optimism that any additional funding would come from the federal government. They're still trying to track and account for the millions, uh, hundreds of millions that they've pumped into um, school systems during COVID. So they're, they're fully occupied with 
still processing all of that. So the hope seems to be on the state level. So our preliminary FY24 budget, to frame that, we create the workbooks that I think I've shared with you with all departments in all schools. And it basically asks, it's not like rainbows and ponies, you know, you want a swimming pool, you want, you know, ask for anything. They, they get it and we have a series of meetings about it. But what do you need as a principal, as a director, as whatever, uh, to continue the level of service we have and if possible, improve? Um, and we go through that very thoroughly and, but that represents kind of our ideal, not a dreamlike state, but what we'd really like to have. Uh, our total with this first cut was a little over, it was $44.2 million, which would be an increase over FY23 of $2.3 million. So, okay. Um, that, that just is what it is, and I'll try to put it in context momentarily. As you know, about 76, 77 percent of our budget is dedicated to personnel. We are, by and large, a personnel-based organization. Um, often people think it's the number of pencils you have and paper costs and even hardware for, you know, tech. And that's all very real, but that isn't the, the big driver. We're roughly 80 percent personnel, um, which is important. So when I talk about that increase of 2.3 million in more or less that ideal first cut of the budget, um, I tried to summarize for you those main cost drivers. And there are six things that are about 84% of that 2.3 million are made up by these six things. So contractual increases, um, $1,055,000, that is uh, COLA of 2% that all of the units have for FY24. Um, and for those units where they have steps and lanes, those include steps and lanes. Staff-wise, we have about 575, uh, 576 staff members, so a, a large organization. Um, so obviously, that's a big number. Uh, maintaining, if we keep the same COVID level of nursing going forward, we will be pulling forward 225,000. That's significant. That new position that I talked about, we have over the past eight years um, introduced adjustment counselor positions into all of the, the schools. We've shared, up until last year, we shared an adjustment counselor between the two five and then we were able to have an individual counselor at each of the two five schools. Now we'd like to, if we can, share an adjustment counselor between the two pre-K through one schools. Um, so that's in this budget. So those are the first three things, uh, these three things all related to staffing costs, totaling one point, a little over 1.3 million. The other budget drivers, I think it was the last meeting that Neil Trahan, our Director of Technology, presented to the committee. Um, she may have a recollection of, of that increase. Most of it was uh, for hardware and software and contracted services, representing an increase of 319,000. Transportation and tuition, out of all of the pieces, that's right now, that's the the haziest, kind of the, the most gray. Um, and we expect it to be for another couple of months, like private uh, special education schools haven't set, most of them haven't set their uh, full tuition rates. Uh, transportation rates came out the other day and they went up 14%. We're gonna see a lot of significant increases um, in all costs, we, we just are. So I would, I'm, guessing that the, the tuitions are going to be significantly um, increased. We also, at this time of year, it's hard to know exactly who is going where in terms of placements. So we'll have, we have some students return to us. We have some students go to out-of-district placements. That's still very much in, in process. We need uh, roughly every three weeks to kind of map that out and take our uh, put our best thinking um, together around the table into one 
document that helps us track those costs. But that, that's a big swing one way or the other. Right now we look fairly stable, um, and the majority of that is tied to uh, transportation and to a lesser degree tuition at this point. And then maintenance later in the, uh, when we get to um, capital, I wanna talk about maintenance a little more, but we do have an increase in this first draft of 83,000 for maintenance projects. Um, you may remember that we used to have hundreds of thousands set aside for the smaller maintenance projects. Um, over time, we pushed as much of that as we could onto capital and the way that, that it's settled, we really don't have, we haven't picked up those sm the cost of the smaller projects in capital. It's been all just like the really big stuff for the most part. And that's left un kind of undone a lot of mid-level and smaller projects for us. So 83,000 doesn't go all that far in the world of, of building maintenance, but uh, it's an improvement for sure. So that would be an additional 625,000. So those six all together, as I mentioned, is about 84% of the total increase um, altogether, of about $2 million, uh, 1.9. So uh, give me a lot of information, but trying to get it again, kind of frame it as we get started uh, with putting this budget together. In FY23, we had that 41.8. Back over this past summer, you may recall that in partnership with the town administrator, um, we did work with an outside group over, the work was geared towards forecasting, long range forecasting for Grafton. The idea was to come up with a three to five year, I won't say plan, basically a I guess it was a, a plan, but it, it wasn't full of specifics with, you know, in FY26, we had one teacher. It, it, it wasn't particularly detailed because it was numerous years out. Um, but the idea in that exercise was to try to define how we can set numbers I, almost ideal budget numbers to hit in order to maximize override funds to last more than two or three years. I think we were shooting really for at least five years. Um, that chapter 70, that new chapter 70 number changed that forecast quite a bit. Um, so the idea was to, to be able to push it out in a, in a way that every year we weren't just kind of winging it. Um, and that was that's a great exercise. The number that came back to us for FY24, the way things stood as of the beginning of last summer, was that we'd be at 43.4 million for FY24. As I, m I mentioned and spoke to, we are coming out of the blocks at 44.2 million well, with a difference of 815,000. So am I making sense so far, kind of? Okay. So. That somewhat ideal first draft, in order to meet that number, we'd have to come up with reductions. And again, it's reductions to the ask. A lot of times this gets covered um, you know, in the newspaper as we're cutting or reducing 815,000 for existing people. We would most likely reduce the ask for technology. We'd reduce things that we're asking for to, to meet this need. Um, so my next steps, unless I get directed otherwise, would be to reduce that preliminary budget. So to have well before January 10th, a budget, a draft again, for the school committee to take a look at that would end bottom line number, get us to that 43.5 million, um, and then have a piece of that, that if we receive additional funds, which we definitely could, whether it's something special that the state does, we get more um, chapter 70 monies than anticipated, um, the Student Opportunity Act, that there's been a lot of talk of that being more fully funded or them enacting 
payment sooner. If you may recall, that was a seven-year plan. There, there's talk about pushing that forward. So um, there, there's definitely the potential for additional revenue to come in. Um, so my thinking would be hit that target number and have as part of the document, if we receive monies above that number, this is the prioritization of or what my recommendation would be to build to meet that number. Does that make sense? No. You're giving me a look. I know. Oh. I think it makes sense. Um, I think it would be a mistake to just hit that target number and not be well prepared if we do receive additional revenue. I think the odds are, are quite high that we will receive more state funding than we currently anticipate. The forecast that we did with the town administrator, we purposefully did uh, very, very conservatively. We didn't, we were very conservative. Um, I can take any questions you have. Y'all look confused. Does anyone want to go first? I have a burning question. Go ahead. <laughs> so, I was thinking that. If that original target was very was as conservative as you say, mm -hmm. why not start with the the second number that you presented, the number that meets all the needs mm -hmm. that we have, which are slim anyway. I mean, like you said, we're not asking for Rainbow yep. and Pony. Um, why not start off with that number, with the forty four, versus the forty three? When it could, uh, yeah. And the town has the, in theory, it, it, I'm t talking in a uh -huh. very general sense. Siri agrees with me. Um, Damian Pierce is out. If that's the case, huh. which backfield would you be targeting, huh. and would you start any <laughs> of those? Oh, that is misbehaving. This fantasy football app. <laughs> Why <laughs> everybody needs to sign It's never their played phones. on its own. <laughs> um, wow. Good. Some that could have been really bad. Right All right. Um, get in a the anyway. <laughs> the I'm trying to think of how to. Given that, thank goodness we had the override. If we didn't yeah. have the override, this would be a, a cataclysmic budget. It just would be. Um, so we've got those funds. What the town, not just us, obviously the select board, finance committee, has to figure out how. And that's going to be the challenge of how much of those funds do they want to spend early. Mm -hmm. Like we, we could ask that we get that 815 and we're fine, but we are going to run out sooner. That, you know, then we're going to hit that cliff. That's, what's, that, that's the tricky part. How we frame that, I'm good with framing it any which way. I guess the like. difference is um, starting, out the, starting the conversation with this is, what we, this is what we need. We need $44 million now we realize there's a difference here. There's a delta between this and our forecasting target. Here are the things that, you know, that might that we might be able to to live without in that get us to that target. Versus saying, here's our number. It's 43 million. This is the forecast target. If we get more money, then maybe we can get these other things that we really need, but maybe we can survive without you know you see what i'm saying the yeah I, I, I guess wonder what your thought is that. on starting with and, and maybe what the yeah i'll, I'll the take the other direction of committee the, members the agree with for that. sure i mean i know i've had this conversation with uh jay a lot so it's the kind of going in and working with the town so it has to come from somewhere so yeah. is it is it going to get pulled from the town is it going to get pulled from the schools it's probably going to be both from what I understand. Um, I guess my question is, you know, I think it's hard to start this way because we don't really know, you know, people come in with their hire. Everybody comes in a little higher knowing that we're gonna take a little bit from it. So is it a strong need what we're taking from this? I mean, I like being a little more on the conservative side. I want this override to stretch longer. I, I am very optimistic that that, um, uh, circuit breaker fund is not going to be funded at 65. I don't know why I feel that way, but it, I mean, the state just gave everybody back money, so I will lose my, you know what, if they can't afford to properly fund a circuit breaker that should be funded even higher. But um, 
So I think for me, I mean, I'm this is I'm more comfortable, even though I understand exactly what you're saying. Like we want to, we want to present and, and try to advocate for what we need the most. And but I don't know if it's really there yet. I don't know if we have to to fight that. It feels like it's a little early still. And I'd be mm. curious to kind of see what really was a reduction in ask. I guess. Yeah, I guess I just uh, just to clarify what I was saying was I think it's. And this is, I, I would think that it would be easier to start with a higher number and cut back from it versus start from a lower number and then ask for a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more if we get more, if we it turns out we get more money. But I don't, you tell Ooh. me. If we wouldn't be asking for that money from the town. That money is going to come from the state, right? So it's not, a, it, this is a town discussion. Am I incorrect like we're going to ask the select board and the town administrator to take give us from the overall budget correct correct it and then a you're saying if we get more side. money it's not going to be from the town it's going to be if the state correct gets, pulls up mm -hmm. more money yeah so it's mm -hmm. more i think to me a political move do we want to come in where we've gotten a large amount of a small pie, to use my favorite expression, or do we want to come in just asking? And I guess to me it comes down to the need. Like, what is it? Are we really losing? Are we? Is it going to hurt us yeah. more in the long if we don't have everything? Like, this maintenance projects, they get more expensive. Are we taking away from kids? Like, we haven't talked about, like, programming at all. Like, in the high school we were able to add programs last year. Are we still able to kind of look at that? So to me, it comes down to really what, what it is, and I don't feel like I know that, I guess, right. yet. So maybe for the second version, which hopefully we're up and running with ClearGov, come in at around the, the 44-2 um, in the end of the month, that will, sh you know, I'll know more about the special education that I talked about, for example, and hope maybe even that, that number decreases. I can come forward with a budget book around that number and then like we've done in the past have the, basically the recommendation for reductions to that ask mm -hmm. yeah. to accompany it yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah I think yeah. now especially because we don't know what those recommendations are and how yeah they might impact programs or yeah. students it's really hard to feel comfortable, I think, with oh, the yeah, yeah. ask, right? Yeah. Right. Because yeah, it doesn't, it goes against our nature, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and what happens when, if we start off asking for 43, which is really less than we really need, like let's pretend that we don't get any more state funding, let's imagine that scenario. We ask for 43, and then if, they're, if we're still in a situation where cuts are needed, right. Which are they going to come to us and say, okay, well, what can you cut from this budget? When really, f we've already made the cuts. We've already, we've cut it from 44 yeah. to 43. And so that's really, yeah. you well, know. Unless something s significant happens, I, I do think that 43-4 is the, the lowest. that's the, the okay. basement, if you will. Okay. I enough. think Evan would, okay. would agree with me on Fair that. Enough. So when, like, Leela, this might be more a question for you. Um, when you were in the tri-committee meetings, like, I, I haven't heard a lot yet about overall budgeting. Is there a big concern on, have you, when you talked to Evan, was there, like, a big concern on their side of the house about anything? No, I think they were using that same forecast yeah. with, again, it was done conservatively with oh. the same Chapter 70, the same Chapter 90. All Everything was stable, and that was... Basically, I mean that's not all from the town. That right. the majority of that is actually not from the town. But right. he, I think, I'm, I can't speak for sure. Her, no, but I know. He was super comfortable with us at that forty-three, yeah. not this a forty-three-four. Feels to me like a very normal, like maybe the first one, <laughs> one of the first ones we've had in a really long time, where we're not going to have to be. Yeah, I think with that override, and I'm very cognizant yeah. of that, the partnership as right. opposed to kind of the, your traditional, not just in Grafton, but if you go back some time, you know, we need this, you yeah. dig your heels in, and we could do that. It, and there's money to be had, but realize that 
Yeah, we that, don't want to spend that, that money. Well, is I don't want to spend that money out. too early because we don't want. We want to. Hopefully, we're going to be able to expand that. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I think this is okay. a compromise. So everybody seems comfortable with that yes. approach. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You guys have any questions? Are you still excited and happy? Yeah. It looks like just in doing the math, it's it's like it's a decrease over and percentage wise over. If we look at the forty three anyway, if we end up on that. Yeah, budget, it was like three point seven. Or the difference, I think. the yeah. the increase in our budget from last year. Yeah. Which is good. Just illustrates how conservative we are to be yeah. and how. Yeah. Trying good to stewards the school district is uh, with the public's money. I think I just stay here. Yeah. I think yeah. It's like Are we ready to move on? My show. All right. Did you want to check your phone? I don't know. I'm still wondering. <laughs> it's right. pretty I new, think too. She thought you said her name. Oh, I couldn't do that if I tried. All right. So we have next is the strategic oh, plan yeah. update. I just wanted to give you a quick update on that. You can't really read it too well, but that infrastructure strand of creating a sustainable in infrastructure that supports teaching and learning. In particular, I just wanted to touch base on maintenance and capital and then update the committee on some work we're doing in the area of bullying. I think we've been doing a really good job in terms of identifying and laying out the large scale capital projects and priorities that we have. Um, I've gone over the five biggest priorities that we have for the coming year. I, I do think we're going to be fully funded in terms of capital, and I think there is going to be left over a few hundred thousand for um, ADA compliance work that needs to be done. Um, I'm still not sure of where we stand with number four. That's at security camera upgrades and the shift to cloud-based. Uh, I haven't talked to Evan about this within the last week or so but we were talking about doing this together they're very interested and they're working on this exact same thing on the town side so if we could do it together uh, be a little more cost effective is what we're trying to do he knew somebody and he was setting up a meeting um, and I had mentioned that we may also need a wheelchair accessible van we had good news on that front we had the poppy van that van that was donated to us uh, we had that assessed. I was uh, went in this thinking like two weeks ago. I thought we'd have to just get rid of it, but they said it's actually in great shape. Uh, it needs some needs some work. It's in the shop right now. Um, in total, even with all of the work um, on the actual lift, um, we're looking at about ten thousand, as opposed to the eighty thousand we were worried that we'd have to invest. So that's a good thing. Um, we're doing much, much, much better with the maintenance in terms of small-scale projects. This is just a little snippet of uh, a spreadsheet that we use every day. All of our lead custodians, principals, and assistant principals can enter in any need at any building from big to little. Um, in this, it goes on. You know, it's a, it's a few pages. We've got 600,000 square feet. We've, we've got a lot of building um, to to update, but this is where we coordinate now um, the vendors that come in, whoever's responsible for it and has follow-up. Uh, it's really been great. So we've done so much better with the small maintenance, and I think we've, for years, been doing well with the big picture things. In doing all of this work this year, we realized what we're missing. Um, and that, for us, is kind of these mid-level projects. So. We have, I think, every roof except for the high school, in some form, a new roof is requested on our capital plan. Those, uh, you know, we ask for that every year. It's, it's millions. They're big projects that aren't uh, right now. Roof grants used to be out there, and big uh, opportunities for some funding. Those are, have really gone away, and it's more uh, HVAC-related, which we took advantage of, which was great for the middle school. Uh, but roofs at one point, that was like a big hot, hot topic. It's not right now. Almost every roof needs, not full replacement, but when it pours, we have leaks. It's, it just happens. Um, those don't make, for the most part, the small list because they're not really day-to-day -day problems, but we can't get them funded through you know, 
the, the bigger capital. So we, we've realized that we need to start shifting some of the capital priorities to focus on, the, um, on, on roofs. Uh, South Grafton jumps out, uh, different pieces of different schools uh, need it. The middle school, uh, their A section definitely needs a, a roof. So you're going to, in the coming months, we're going to be talking about that a lot more. Um, painting, we've got a nice partnership with Blackstone Valley. Um, Folk Tech, we're going to start working with them again on just ongoing painting. Nothing that you walk in and go, oh my gosh, this is horrible, but just like that low level clean up the painting of doors at North Street, um, the door jams at the middle school. So uh, we're going to revive that partnership. And then plumbing is always an issue on the Capitol. Every year we get this uh, roughly 100000 to use towards plumbing HVAC repairs. Again, with six schools and 600,000 square feet, that's, that's a lot of plumbing. And 100,000 goes a long way in your house, but not really for us. So <coughs> what we're going to do, assuming that we do get a few hundred thousand for ADA-related funding, which seems like that's going to happen uh, in partnership with uh, the town because they, they had a similar audit and they have similar work to be done. So we're going to set aside monies, collaboratively work on ADA compliance, and we're going to really focus on our bathrooms, it's bathrooms and in the old schools, like the bubblers or the water fountains. Um, our bathrooms aren't accessible um, for sure. If you've been to the middle school bathrooms, they look like middle school bathrooms from 1969. Um, so they won't be the Taj Mahal, but we can make them accessible. We can have new uh, stalls. There's a lot of work we can do with a few hundred thousand ac across all the bathrooms in every school. Um, the high school is accessible uh, for the most part in, the, in all of their bathrooms now. So I'm, um, believe it or not, excited about that work. And then with the bowling plan, uh, this week, or I think last week, uh, the original plan turned 12. Um, we've done updates to it, but we as an uh, ad administrative team are working together on Thursday. We're meeting Thursday afternoon. And we've already, Kristen and I have already drafted an updated plan that incorporates all new legislation, um, reflects the use of uh, PowerSchool, our, our data management system, where in the original that we haven't updated the part about, it's all like paper-based, like triplicate copies. That's just, we want it to reflect what's actually going on. Um, and then with so we've done, I think, a pretty good job. We want the leadership team for a few hours to really dive into it and identify what does work, what doesn't work, what, what parts of the process, even though they line up completely with what's mandated by the state, what works really well, what's a hindrance. We want it to be as effective um, for parents, for students, and for our staff as possible. So we are going to go through that on Thursday. We'll take that um, in within the next couple of weeks uh, have that draft and present it to the policy subcommittee for consideration and then eventually have it come before the school committee and we'll present on it. I think that's all I have for that piece. No. Any questions on that part of his presentation on part two? Strategic uh, plan. All right. No? Lori, you look like you're thinking. I'm just thinking. You're just thinking? Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to the superintendent report. All right, Thank and you. this one's pretty quick. Um, since Actually, we wait, no, sorry. Oh. I did have a question. Fire away. Um, I think on one of the slides before you mentioned uh, boiler makeup. That did, wasn't North Street where we just had a new boiler installed? Makeup valve has failed. Um, we did, and I went and saw it the other day, and... I don't know much about there. boiler. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what a makeup yeah. valve is, so I couldn't I tell you. <laughs> it couldn't be too big a deal if it makes it on this list. Mm -hmm. Like we have an emergency. Like if we have something that yeah. needs to be fixed, okay. we're not putting it on it's the spreadsheet. Under we're dealing with it. Anyway, it would, would be think. anyhow. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. My guess is it's not because that would we wouldn't have brought that company in for mm. something under. We would have brought train in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I was called over there. 
gosh, maybe Thursday. Um, like when we, last week we went to myself, um, Tony, Anita, probably five of us met with the principal and the lead custodian and we toured the schools to get that those mid-level issues, mm -hmm. like the leaks. You can hear about the leaks, but I want to see what the actual impact is, where they are, what, it just helps to see it, yeah. have some photos. Um, but when we were over at North Street, they brought me down to the new boiler and John Gagney was like a proud dad. Aww. He said, <laughs> it's awesome. Um, he just couldn't have been more impressed. Mm. Um, so I can check. I'm 99% oh, nice. sure. They've got equipment all over the place, but uh, they couldn't have been happier with it. Um, Good. And the heating is just so much better, not just for the boiler, but what they're experiencing in the rooms is awesome. That's oh. great. Well, that's, that's much awesome. needed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to recognize the football team. I think since we last met, the football team went to Gillette. I had the opportunity to go. I know some of you did as well. Um, so to make it to the Super Bowl at Gillette's just pretty awesome. Um, and our cheerleaders did a fantastic job at Gillette uh, with our pep band. And I wanted to recognize them right before Gillette. They competed at Worcester State um, in the state, like a state championship. It came in third. And that was just, they were fantastic. They had a, a great, great performance. Wanted to touch on absences. Um, this is not a Grafton issue. Well, it is a Grafton issue, but it's an every town issue. Um, with a high number of absences, it looks extra high because I only have 25% on the vertical axis. Uh, but to illustrate kind of the pattern last week, um, so I have three things up here. In the blue, I picked a random day in the beginning of October just so we'd have something, kind of, some sense of what a normal day is. And that reflects our, like last year, our absentee rate for the entire year among students was 8%. So that's pretty normal, if you will. Um, in the red, that's December 7th. So last week, we had that big spike at Millbury Street with 22% of students out on that one given day and over the between the 7th and the 12th and went down to 8%. Um, we're in the midst of seeing an increase at GHS and North Street. Um, so I, I don't know obviously how high that's going to go in the numbers were from yesterday not today based on number of kids that we crossed in the morning and parking it felt like a lot of kids were more kids were out today than yesterday but and that would kind of make sense that it grows this week and decreases. We have yet to see a real um, real jump at South Grafton and North Grafton. Um, so it's sizable. Uh, we are going to put out more about if, you know, the, the ability to wear a mask if you want to wear one. Uh, if you're sick, stay home. Common sense things. But um, all signs point to it that the, the this winter being tough in terms of illness. Um, obviously, this is based on 100% on the vertical axis. Uh, still a lot of kids, but in the grand scheme of things, we do, we do have a, a lot of kids still at school. Laura, did you have yeah, I had a question about something? that? Yeah. yeah. So um, I know in the past, I guess my question is, what's the threshold that we would close? Or is um, I, I, I don't, th there isn't a magic number. Yeah, if I know. You do have to, if you do that, it, it's definitely a challenge. You've got to do it in partnership with the Department of Public Health okay. and DESE. Okay. Um, if we, say every other district was just doing lovely and we were seeing huge spikes, they would give us a great deal of attention. We would say this is a unique to Grafton. Okay. The fact that it's everywhere, we, I haven't even received anything from DPH saying, you know, call us if like we did with COVID. You would call them, you would work with them if you right. did have a real outlier spike. Um, so I, there isn't a magic number. Uh, once it got, if it was to get to like say 40% anywhere, probably over 30, we're gonna definitely call DPH and just <coughs> make them aware, maybe even 25%. Um, so that that's, that's, 
how it's done. It gets super messy. I know that's not the worry, but if one school cancels for mm -hmm. three days, yeah. you have to make up those days, and you run into all kinds of contractual problems where you have shared staff that now are working additional mm -hmm. days. Um, yeah. it's, it's not that we wouldn't do it, but it's not a decision that would be taken lightly. I get a lot of, not a lot, I get some emails from parents that just you know shut down for the week and clean. Um, and I, I, I get it, uh, but it's not usually as easy as people think it is. We ha have, um, obviously, we have all of the deep cleaning equipment, the misters, we have the aerosols, we, we have it all, and we are using that nightly. Uh, this week, we're doing shifting some staff and doing the full cleaning at every building um, this evening. We'll, of course, do that. Then we'll have next week. During the break, we'll do it again, um, even more thorough because we'll have more time. So we're doing what we can, but I don't get it. How much that is really impacting things, I, I don't know. But it can't hurt is what we figured. And is your, just based on your experience, when you see these numbers now before the holiday break, yeah. are you, would you anticipate them going up quite a bit? Or no, is it it's I don't different know. all Th the This time. is a Hard new one. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It seems like we in Grafton, overgeneralization for sure here, but seem to have this fever lasting relatively short amount of time, two to three days, and kids are coming back. Um, I know some educators in Maine, and they were dealing with RSV, like you wouldn't believe. Um, stomach bug. Was, uh, this is super overgeneralization, but I know some um, educators on the North Shore, and that seemed to be the thing, like intense headaches and vomiting. Mm -hmm. we, we may have some of that, but predominantly it seems to be feel terrible, have basically the flu for two days and then mm -hmm. maybe three days and bounce back. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, this is unprecedented that everybody seems to be getting sick. So uh, we're keeping an eye on it. We're running the numbers every day. Um, our nursing staff is fantastic. Uh, they're doing, everybody's doing the best we can. I haven't had any calls from our nursing staff to other, do anything other than just ride it out and have people be as cautious as possible. The stay home when you're sick is a big one. We were taught, we had a student advisory council meeting before this and there were numerous stories about students coming in with sick. The, the kids know you're sick, but you're gonna sit there and get everybody else sick. It's definitely super contagious. There's no question about that. Is it impacting staff? Oh yeah, the same, so are we, sa same is, are we idea. Are struggling staff-wise? We are struggling. Um, <coughs> in a w bizarre way that COVID We've never been better at dealing with absences than we are now. I mean, if this happened back, it's swine flu, I think, was before I became superintendent. But many, I think, some schools, if not the district, shut down. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now post-COVID, like if we hadn't had COVID, and every, I don't know if everybody would be sick, but um, I think we'd be kind of losing it. And the whole meeting would be about our numbers um, and what to do. Plus, I but think you're kind of trained. You have all those cleaning supplies and the practice and cleaning, and yeah, you know, yeah. you've had that. You've had that experience too to to know that that. that yeah, it was almost second health. nature to yeah, to do yeah. it, but but yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. I expect the staffing to be a, a challenge uh, through through the break. Through the no break. question okay. about it. Okay. Um, hasn't got to the point yet that they've asked like central office to go and cover. And we did that all the time in COVID, but. Right. I anticipate end of this week, next week we do. Okay. And I think that's all I had for my report. Oh, I had one more thing. Um, at maybe the last meeting or two meetings ago, I talked about a partnership. It was uh, Evan Broussard had brought this to me and kind of offered it up to the schools. He was at some event in, I think it's Palmer, Mass, and they had this giant mural on one of their buildings. And he saw this and thought of, in the back of this building, we've got that, I think it's the annex is what it's called. It's just that square brick thing. Um, and there are some uh, two very large walls, but one in particular that you walk by. And he asked, would we be interested, 
we being an art club and students be interested in creating a mural, a giant mural that could go up there. Um, I thought it was a great partnership, reached out to our art club. I met with them this past week. They are just running with it. Um, they're gonna start working on it. It's actually just different blocks of wood um, so they can actually work on it before we put it all together. Um, but they're gonna, at some point, they are gonna come up with three to five design choices they're going to bring it to school committee they're going to run it by different groups get feedback um, so anyhow i just wanted to share that with you i don't know a single soul there is the one picture i could find that captured you know their work cool thanks and that's all i have questions um I was just wondering, do you have an update on the extended education program, the 18 to 22 oh. program? Yep. Yep. Um, so we're, they are just about done in terms of construction right now. Um, we, the walls are up. I'm trying to think what the biggest, there was something in the kitchen, something that has to go on the walls. I don't know if it's like coating or metal. I, I don't know what it is, but there was some something that's holding us up in the kitchen. Everything else is in what we have. We have ordered all the furniture. We actually have that on location. It's stored in the back of the middle school. That needs to be moved over and we can start moving in. I think it's around the 20th, beginning of, I think it's the beginning of next week. We can move in and we should be operational there after the break. Great. <coughs> Pretty good. Wow. Yeah. That's great, exciting. All right. <coughs> Good. All right. Thank you very much. Very Great welcome. reports. Um, okay. I think Laura stepped out for a minute. I'm going to skip over future agenda, and I'm going to skip to down to member reports and see if our student members would like to give a report. Um, it's been pretty slow at Grafton High School, which is kind of a good thing, but <laughs> great things have been happening, like um, Superintendent Dave Cummings said. Uh, we did go to Gillette, which was such, it was really fun. fun. I went to the game. It was, it was great. It was such yeah. a boost for morale to be able to go and see our team play there. Yeah. Um, winter sports did begin, swimming, basketball, can't remember the other sports, but tryouts ended they got the teams and they're going pretty good games are doing good um we and have the yeah. nhs induction just happened like two weeks ago mm -hmm. i think it went really well no yeah. bumps very smooth and uh we have our band concert tomorrow yeah. at seven at the auditorium in the high school the chorus concert is on thursday at seven also in the auditorium and that's about it. Yeah. Do you have anything? No. All right. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Before I skip to member reports, just oh, so that uh, we didn't discuss. Um, so we can continue with that, or we can go. Uh, yeah, let's continue yeah. with member reports. Why not? Yeah. Sorry any other that. members have any member reports? Nothing? All right. You went to NAPAP. Awesome. Happy Allerton. So congratulations. Thanks for your mom. Great. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Good night. I was thrilled to go to the um, the Gillette Stadium at the football game. That was so much fun. It was. Yeah. So it was exciting really to cool. see everyone there and everyone being able to participate and be part of that. It's awesome. It was, it was a great yeah. opportunity. Yeah. It was just really cool. Good night. All right. Good night. night guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So back to future agenda schedule planning. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. Um, I have much to add. Yes. Do you? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do not. So we will, so we'll, to be determined about the budget hearing, then <laughs> we'll keep it on here for January 24th for now. Um, do we have any? Yeah. Um, and then we'll see at our next meeting in January, on our next meeting is January 10th, that we have a little bit of a holiday break, and then we come back. Um, anything, any ads, any changes? Oh, wow, we're getting right into school we're still updates. Doing. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the best part. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. Um, all right, moving on to approval of minutes. Um, 
I guess I can give an update, Jay, if, if you have anything to add, but we have hired, you mentioned last meeting, that we have hired a new secretary who's working on the minutes sure. and getting those done. So the next meeting will probably have a few, mini <laughs> a few yes. minutes to, to review and approve. Yep. Um, she, she sent a set uh, this morning. Oh, great. Um, and actually it looked really, really good. This is Jessica. Okay. Uh, Kristen and I just need to fix a few names, some, mm, some yeah, normal yeah. stuff that we okay. would fix. Uh, we just haven't had a chance to do that. But we'll definitely have that. I'll be surprised if she doesn't have another one. Um, mm. Definitely. Yeah, by January 10th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we, we could be caught up, but they look really good. Good, good. good. That's yeah, great. Yeah, Thank you for helping us, helping uh, get someone new hired so we can get those all done. But we do have um, policy subcommittee meeting minutes. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to approve those meeting minutes from December 6, 2022. So moved. Yeah. I have a motion. Yeah, I, I'll make a motion to approve yeah. the minutes. Oh, no, Leora already, already made the motion. Did already do what I didn't Yeah, hear. she did. So you just need a second, is yes. what you're saying? If you would like to. I would second that motion. <laughs> All right, motion <laughs> made and second. Any discussion on those minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Seeing none, Thanks. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Three, unanimous for quorum tonight and um, financial report we have a warrant from uh, December 8th I'll entertain a motion to approve this warrant from December 8th 2022 in the amount of eight hundred and one thousand dollars two hundred and one eight let me try that again <laughs> eight hundred and one thousand two hundred ninety eight dollars and fifty cents so moved seconded motion made and seconded any discussion on the warrant all right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Three. All right, thank you. All right, um, policy. Laura, this is all for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, this is. <laughs> we do have a few policies to discuss tonight. Um, Madam the, Chair, yes. I, I just want to say, I do want to move forward, even though there's, there's a quorum here, and this is a major po policy shift, um, but we, we really need to move forward mm -hmm. so I hope everybody agrees I don't want to pass I over you're yeah. good to go I yeah agree. I want to plus it's first readings for all of them so, so if there's yeah. any oh, it's first readings then I yeah. think we're yeah concerns can always yeah. be presented in a absolutely yep. yeah. and there's it's not a shift but we, we're getting things up to where they code. need to be <laughs> okay. yeah which is important yeah um okay I'm used to looking at this electronically so I will try <laughs> the old-fashioned paper method tonight um, okay so the first one we have JLCD administering medicines to students um, you can see in the um, in the notification and the notice here and the notes that were made mm -hmm. um, that there were just a few changes made uh, oh wait no I'm sorry let me go back um, so this one, one of the things that we were looking at and we were talking about in our policy subcommittee um, was getting up to date in some of these policies, especially um, regarding administering medicines to students and some of these others that we're gonna talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. One of the things that br was brought up, and I'll talk about this real briefly, and then Laura, you can please add more to this. Um, there are, we have MASE policies that deal with these. Our policy was very different than the MASC policy. Okay. This MASC policy is one that has been discussed and vetted and reviewed and um, you know, and we reviewed it, made a few tweaks, um, which is actually what the notes that you see in here. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also see in the sidelines um, what our, I think this is what our original policy was, right? Yeah. This is how it turned out in the so we printed version. So and Laura, I'll let you add to that. We kind of saw that a lot of our policies are procedure-based versus policy-based. Right. And we've been working um, to, to change that, and um, at least we're trying to recommend that we move to MASC policies, and we'll still review. We know that some of them aren't as inclusive of, as we like to be, so I've been meaning to reach out to them and just be like, how can we, mm. like, do a hybrid? Because mm -hmm. I don't, some of ours are, I don't know how it works when we want them to be graphing-based, and not just cookie cutter, right. um, which is important, but our policies are, are Frankenstein together. And I'll take ownership on some of that. I've been on policy for a long time, but it, I think it's a good restart, and I'm, I'm deviating a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this one in particular, um, you know, the three of us we talked about last, we weren't 
you know, here around at the Papua New Guinea, but we talked about we went to MAFC and mm-hmm. we sat through it, and there was a lot, too, from them. I mean, policy comes from a lot of people's thoughts. Sure. We have the nurses, we have the students, we have parents, we have teachers, we have everybody. We have to put together a policy that will be um, best for the, the students, really, in the long run. Yep. So um, that's where we're coming from this one. Uh, we, we made a couple of, of additions, as Liz mentioned, just that we thought were clear, like it's, you need to keep your medication in your... And some of this is, it's not the best for parents. Like it is annoying that you have to bring in two weeks of medication or whatever it is, but that's because the nurses need to have time to get permission from the doctor. Like there's a right. lot that goes into it. So that was a lot for you, and I'm sorry we're putting you on the spot, Laura. No, that's okay. okay. And I will say a couple of highlights are one of the things we've added, and Laura it started to say this, um, medication dispensed at school must be in the original container. We added that. Um, that was in our language from our original policy that we looked at, and we said we want to keep that. But it wasn't and in it, the MASC. Yeah, it that. just it allows the nurse to be able to say if, if, if I am delivered a medication that is in a baggie, <laughs> it's perhaps I can suspect. turn it back and say no, no, no. I, you know, I right. need this in the original container. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know they have the policy to back them up. Um, and it also this policy um, allows for the administration under certain circumstances of medication by the student themselves. Um, so with nurse approval with though. nurse approval and yeah and certain um, all the safeguards safeguards right. yeah they have to have the prescription they have to have the approval to do it from the physician um, and things like that okay anything else yeah all right so like inhalers yeah yeah And this is, uh, like Laura said, this is a first reading tonight, so um, yeah, we'll bring it back we have a second, back. we'll have a second chance at this at our next meeting in January as okay. well. And the Narcan is added, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good to go. Do we want to vote on them each individually, or do you want to go through them and? I think it would be easier to vote individually. Okay. I think for these, Actually, yeah. There's some that we're deleting. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, fair. Oh, yeah. okay. So okay. they're each dealt with differently. Yeah. 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 Three okay. of them we're recommending for deletion, so it's really only four that yeah. we're doing. Yeah, and they're really not. I mean, yeah, it's not as bad as it looks. Okay. I'll, I'll entertain that if. Um, I'll make a, I can make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve uh, JLCD administering medicines to students as a first reading. Second. Motion and a second. And any further discussion on this policy? Seeing none, all those in favor as accepting it as a first reading? Aye. 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 Three. Aye. Thank you. All right. The second one is JLCDE. This was the medication permission form. We recommended deleting it because it's a medication permission. So we recommend deleting it from policy, from but policy. the nurses it's are responsible for this. So they this have is right. one. Something, they send it. Yeah, right. and if it's changed, they need to have control over it. We believe the school committee should not be controlling permission. What a form yeah. looks like. Right. Because yeah. it was coming in, like, uh, it was, like, two pages, and they're like, can you make this, like, so it shouldn't be in our policy. Yeah. Fine. And there are, I think there are, one of the things that I learned at the MASC conference, too, is there are certain reasons for having things like that in policy if it's helpful. And we didn't think that this was helpful in this yeah. case. So okay. I recommend deleting it. So we're not doing away with parents no. being able no. to sign a permission slip for their kids we're to get ibuprofen. We're not doing away with no, permission they slips. They just don't slips. live under, under the school policy. committee umbrella. They live under building right. and nursing yeah. umbrellas. Perfect. I know that I was saying that just as a because yep. it was a little bit and we we went back and forth on things and I was like we don't dictate you know what pages of text teachers should be teaching right mm-hmm. why are you know that was my so we bad could analogy. Uh, Laura, what do you think we could go through the others that we are deleting and explain those oh and sure then and then just do one for those those them as a group. yeah they're all yeah. in a row aren't they to. yeah so the second one was um, was JLCD JLCD E we had, and then yeah. JLCD E one, um, which was also which was an over-the-counter permission form, also 
We're mm. not getting rid of the permission forms. We just don't need them as part of policy. And then the last one was JLCD R1, which was a copy of the regulation, which I don't even think was quite, it wasn't an exact copy of the regulation mm. either. It, it was, there were some differences. So what we did instead is uh, made sure that our policy refers to that regulation. And um, instead of just having an old copy of uh, regulation that I think had been updated. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that way, place. if it gets updated, people can refer to that. To that as Directly. opposed to. Directly. Yeah. Yep. yeah, which yeah. we thought was, we always, you know, we want to have these policies as the best resource for, uh, for teachers, for administrators, for parents, for anyone. And so we're really trying to work hard to make sure that all of these are as they should be. Yep. And I think referring to the regulation is mm -hmm. one of those steps. Yep. So that's why we recommend those three for deletion. So that m makes complete sense. They don't seem to belong in policy at all. <laughs> all right, so then I'm going to make a motion to delete policy JLCDE, medication permission forms, uh, policy JLCDE1, and JLCDR1. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion on the... Policies. No, great Seeing job, none. policy subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor of deleting these three policies. Aye. Three. All right, three. Thank you. Okay. Laura, do you want to take the next one? Sure. All right. I'll take the next oh, one. Fun. So the next one's uh, uh, Neil Trahan went to a conference, mm -hmm. and um, they it was a Desi conference, and they told him not just him but that the MASC policies are the ones we need to be following um, for, the, for the next ones. And I think we were, we were fairly in line, but some of it was out of date. For instance, our homeless coordinator had been listed as Dr. Cummings and it's now Neil, right. so we updated that. Um, so this one, we recommend replacing with the MASC policy. I don't think we made any changes except to add Neil and then to make sure we had the um, advisory updated. Um, and then this brings us up to, um, I don't know what the word, regulations, I guess. Mm -hmm. I keep wanting to say up to code, but it's not a code. So. In line with the regulations. In line. Yeah. Okay. In line with regulations and the law, yeah. which we weren't outside of, but we needed, I think we had to update it within a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So we're ahead of the game. Yeah. Okay. So this is. We're basically replacing it with the MASC yeah. policy, and which is vetted. And which is vetted, right. which yeah. is people who have de de degrees. Right. And, right. Yeah. and just for the people at home, because we're doing this, and I'm sure it's hard to follow along, we're talking about the homeless students' enrollments, rights, and services, um, it, which means if we have homeless students who will come to Grafton, we still need to, we need to educate them. They have the right to be educated at their home school. We have to provide transportation to them. Um, and this just gives, not just, there's a lot of guidance that comes around, but um, it really protects the students uh, no matter where they wind up being, which is a good policy. Great. Because the next two are somewhat similar, do yeah. you want to group those as well? And then I'll entertain a motion either way, if people want to break them out or if they... No, uh, whatever the easiest. Think might, I think it would work if we group this, these together, too. We still yeah. get the same sort of approach. This is the exact same thing, um, except it's for military children, and we're recommending that we replace with MASC based on the guidance that Neil received at yeah. the DESI con conference. Um, and again, vetted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And DESI saying, you need to follow this policy. So... Okay. I didn't want to go up against Desi on on this. No, there might be other things. No, they both make sense. I mean, they're protecting the rights of both military right. students and and students experiencing homelessness. And the last one is the same for foster care students. Yeah. So, okay. Um, it's up. We are updating with um, the MASC, and I think the only change on that was just to do using the more inclusive languages mm -hmm. that we've been doing. Um, that was our only change. And one other change that we made to the policy on military children it. was just, we talked about the use of the word students versus children, just because oh, some yeah. right. were governing some students, or this governs students and, and not just children, because we have 18-year-olds, so we 
we kind of talked about that a little yeah, bit. Like, <laughs> what's the right yeah. word? Uh, you know, for the most part, they are children, but um, we use students. We use we change to students. Yeah, yeah so it's good to have. But I d just noticed we didn't change the title, so I suppose we should do that. Educational uh, opportunities for yeah. military. Well, well, I think I'd like to recommend we leave it. Leave that? Yeah. That actually, well, as I was saying yeah. that, I thought, no, that, yeah. I think that's yeah. fine there, actually. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. But okay. Yeah. So those. I mean, the only thing I would say, and this is, you know, yeah. you guys know me, I think the, um, the current sort of way to refer to people as that they are experiencing homelessness as opposed to calling them homeless students. Oh. I like yeah. that. Um, and so I would like to discuss maybe changing all references from homeless students to students ex experiencing homelessness. Yeah. No, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Yeah. See, that's the kind of thing when I'm going, when we want to, if we just want to go through with the MASD policies, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that we've caught. Right. And I don't know how to do that yet because I do want to recommend moving because we have so many yeah. policies. We're doing a great job, but it's still like, I've, I mean, I don't know, I always say this, but I've been on policy subcommittee. I still haven't gotten even to J, <laughs> yeah. right. J yet, and, and that's not good. Yeah. So, but then, you know, these little nuances, Right. I, so I don't know how to work with, I don't know how that works, but I'm sure there's a solution. It's also a matter of, you know, we do the best that we can, yeah. and... We want to be up to date with our policies, and when it comes to things like this, we will make these changes. And, you know, is it are we making more strides by adopting the MASD policies, and then kind of and then taking the time to work through and make yeah. the inclusive language changes that we want and things like that, versus going the other route and doing what right. we've been doing, which we've been working and working and working and trying to review everything, mm -hmm. and. It's just, it's, we have so many right. that we've realized that it's just taking so, so many. long. And it, are we making a, a big step forward by starting with adopting the MASD for, yeah. for the ones that we haven't reviewed in the last year or so? Yeah. Um, and then, and then kind of, you know, I mean, starting to work on these things with the good intent that we want to do that and we don't, you know. Right. Which, and even we could even, I mean, and this is going off topic, but we could even make a blanket statement like, you know, the Grafton Public Schools believes mm -hmm. in inclusive language, including blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. something. Right. We could, but for this mm -hmm. one, yeah, I yeah. we'll make those recommended. Um, I mean, that, that, that was the only I, thing, I, yeah. I think I knew that at one time and it left my brain. Yeah, I thought, it, it, I thought. Thought maybe we'd mention that during our meeting too, and we just we got diverted to other topics maybe. But yeah, okay. Other than that, no, that's good. That's great. Um, I would say let's make a motion to accept as a first reading uh, policy JFABD, policy JFABE, and policy. J F A B F. Second. Motion made. Second. And any further discussion on this? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. Agree. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Leah. Yeah. And thanks, thanks for and thank you. Thanks for, for sitting <laughs> through us, like directly talking to you about it. Fellow policy. Oh, member. thank you, fellow. I could have really gummed it all up if I wanted to. You could <laughs> have. You could have, but we would still outvote you. True. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I mean. But that didn't happen, so we're good. So no, and we would take your feedback. All right. We've already um, <laughs> we've already done member reports. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any correspondence to discuss. I don't see any correspondence at all. Um, and I don't believe we need to go into executive session unless any member doesn't need to go. Right. No. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn unless anyone has anything else. A motion. I will, I will consider, but I will <laughs> may not. But allow. you may not vote us. Yeah. Uh, motion to adjourn. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. Aye. Discussion. No. No. All right. All, All those right. in favor. Aye. 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 Motion Aye. adjourned. Thank you. Thank Good night, Grafton. Happy New Year. See you next year.